Assalamu alaikum. This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org slash donate. As little as $10 a month can help people find life-changing guidance. And those that we come together time and time again and see is that it never gets old, it never gets boring, that every time that you meet, that there's something very special that happens. And that this interaction can be referred to, as our teachers have said, the Anwar of Talaqi, which is almost impossible to translate into English. But there's something about when the brother meets his brother and the sister meets her sister and the believers come together, is that there is an exchange of light and there's an exchange of the greatest good. And when you come together solely for his sake, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that there is immense benefit in it. How could it be otherwise when there is an ether that states is that when you go visit your brother or your sister solely for the sake of Allah Ta'ala, you shayya that thalika shaqs, you shayyi'ahu sab'una alf malak. There is 70,000 angels that walk in procession with that particular individual. And that 70,000 here is not even an exact number. You feed it kathara indicates that there is an unimaginable amount of angels and angels are beings of light. And so when people come together and that just coming together for the sake of Allah Ta'ala is sufficient for us to receive those blessings. But the condition is that we all make a righteous intention. Is that the only reason that we are coming is solely for the sake of Allah Ta'ala wa Ta'ala. And that even if we forget to make that intention, one of the great blessings is as that our dear beloved brother Sheikh Abdurrahman had mentioned in this blessed hadith is that even the one who comes with a worldly need or for worldly purposes or is just there because he's forced to be there or has to be there or has a debt that he's trying to collect or whatever it might be is that that person will also receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when people come together for Allah ta'ala's sake no one is left out from the mercy of Allah Jalla Jalalu and so this is a great blessing and when you combine to that that very blessed souls and beautiful people and that loving to see the visitors that come. It's always wonderful to have Sidi Muhammad Abdabari that come to the gatherings. And we were just speaking about him earlier. I hope his ears weren't ringing, of course, in the most beautiful of ways because we were talking about this early generation of people, of those that con- converted in the 70s and in the 80s and how that we were so blessed when we converted in the 90s to have that such beautiful people that took care of us and that showed us the way. We were speaking about Sidi Ilyas and that... Uh, that um, Omar's parents and that when they converted and all of these blessed people that we are that so fortunate to know and to be a part of this beautiful story that all of it is saying with its lisan al-hal is that this is the time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to honor the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa with people from these lands and we're also very blessed to have the father of Um Hamza, the Abu Rami, that come and join us from Mr. Saga, and Sahlan Marhaban. We're very blessed to have him here and that he brings with him barakat and khairat. And so when we come together like this, is that we should that always remind ourselves to Abshiru. Our Prophet Sallallahu taught us to that not only to take omens but to take good omens and to that take glad tidings from various situations and signs that we perceive in creation, but to also to give them others. This was his way. That he reminded us, Bashiru wala tunafiru. Is that give glad tidings. That do things and say things that give people hope, in other words. Wala tunafiru. Do not push people away. Don't carry yourself in such a way that you push people away from the deen. That you don't, you're not a means or source of their upliftment. Wayasiru wala tu'asiru. And make things easy for people. And do not make things difficult. Really, seriously, if we look at our deen, it actually is very easy. Our deen is very easy. And what's really important is that we actually see even the most basic of things as great. We were talking about this the other day with some brothers. And we were talking about the five daily prayers. And really, if you think about just the fact, before you even get into the ahkam and the legal rulings of prayer and all of the things that nullify the prayer and all of the conditions of the prayer and all of that, just the fact that someone is taking five times out of their day to pray for the sake of Allah Ta'ala, think how significant that is. And compare that to the vast majority of the people in this world and how they spend their day. And just ask 
a, someone who at one point in their life that had not been granted hidayah and the gift of Islam and ask that person about praying five times a day. Really think about that. And if you reflect upon this, it's actually really deep. And so sometimes is that we hold ourselves to such a high standard. And I'm not saying we don't work to that maintain higher to attain higher degrees of closeness to Allah Ta'ala, but we also have to remind ourselves in the process of the blessing of even doing the most simple of things, and they're not simple. Maintaining the five daily prayers is an immense blessing, and it's something immense with Allah Jalla Jalla. Taking time out of your day, structuring your day around those five daily prayers, this is of the utmost importance and of the utmost significance, and you will find immense blessing in your life if you give priority to the prayer. Because the prayer will say to us on Yom Qiyamah is that it will that be given the ability to speak. And for those of us that, that establish the prayer and maintain the prayer and preserve the prayer, it will make dua for us and say that may Allah preserve you as you have preserved me. And that those that neglected the prayer is that it will say the opposite to them. Is that may Allah that neglect you as you have neglected me. Prayer is the very essence of, this, of, of what it means to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word itself, salah, comes from the Arabic word sila, which is a connection. It is our link. And our Prophet sallallahu taught is that it's actually the greatest manifestation of kufran and ni'mah. Al-ahdu ladhi baynana wa baynana salah. The covenant that is between us and them is the prayer. فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَقَدْ كَفَرْ the vast majority of the imams interpret this hadith to mean is that the covenant between us and them is the prayer and whoever abandons it has been ungrateful to the utmost degree in brackets for the blessings of Allah Ta'ala. And that some of them have interpreted it even in a stricter fashion, however, is that this is the essence of being ungrateful. Because that if you really think about the amount of time that goes into prayer, it's a very small amount of time. But what we want to do is, we want to live that the reality of prayer and to experience its sweetness in the way that the people before us that experienced it. This beautiful poem that Sayyid Sayyid Abdul Fattah recited, um, it's so incredibly beautiful. It's a poem by the great Habib Ali bin Muhammad al-Habshi, who passed away in the year 1334 of the Hijrah. And I wanted to just share a few lines of this poem because it's in Arabic and that we're falling short and on the translation project, which we keep hoping that we'll get to. But inshallah, one day we will. And so many of these beautiful poems that we want them to at least be rendered by way of translation into English so that we can understand their basic meanings. In the meantime, that we will have to just translate them. That he says here, Know that Know the rights of the people of truth And that Travel the path with them Okay Or that you could even say That know that they, the people of truth Are upon the truth And that travel the path with them And he's explaining what this is This is the path Of taqwa this is the path of being mindful of Allah Jalla Jalalu, Min Haydul Saru Warahum. And that follow closely wherever it is that they go. Wherever it is they go, whatever it is that they do, is that emulate them. Follow in their footsteps, come to know their ways. So this is a that prerequisite that we actually spend time learning about them. And to each one of the great Imams that you learn about. You are learning about someone who is an inheritor of what it means to be a walking Qur'an. Mm-hmm. Because the Prophet was the walking Qur'an and every one of them to connect to and learn about that is the great Imams, especially from Ahlul Bayt Rasulillah, is that they've re- received this by way of inheritance from the Prophet ﷺ. They used to mention this about the great <coughs> Habib Abdullah bin Sayyid bin Tahir, is that when you would watch him and observe him, you could extract the Adab and Nabawiyya. All of the prophetic etiquettes by his times of stillness and his movements. How he ate, how he spoke, how he walked, how he taught, how he worshipped, how he was at home, how he interacted with people. You could just watch him and observe and extract and extract. And one of the amazing things about the truly enlightened people 
is that whenever they speak of a principle, usually they will that support what it is that they have witnessed with, the, with the, what, that principle, with the story that they've witnessed firsthand from a person. And the greatest example that I, there are many examples of that, but I've heard one of my teachers speak about his teacher, Habib Abba Qadr Saqaf. I've heard the grandson of Habib Ahmad Shura Haddad speak about his grandfather. And there's virtually not a single principle that is among the principles of our deen, except that they have witnessed a story firsthand where that principle or that trait or that aspect of the deen was exemplified and lived in the life of that person that they were quoting that about. And so he says, فَالسَّعَادَ manuta kullaha بِقْتِفَاهُ That all of felicity is dependent upon following them. Why? Because they're the inheritance of the Rasul. And then he says, بَخْتْ مَنْ قَدْ رَآهُمْ أَوْ رَآ مَنْ رَآهُمْ And he says, بَخْتْ That how blessed is the one who has seen them or has seen someone who has seen them. Because that that nadar yasri is that the gaze upon them in the sense flows into those that then see them after them. Because there's something that is absorbed that is then passed on like a conduit. And that when your heart connects to them is that you're connected to that chain and that you are like an additional conduit then that's going to extend that light to other people just by virtue of the connection itself. And perhaps that this is also an echo of a blessed hadith of our Prophet Sallallahu that says, and this is mentioned by Muli Ali Qari in his Hashia on one of the most important books of Mustalab hadith written by Ibn Hajar. He quotes the hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reported to have said, is that Tuba liman ra'ani wa amana bih. Tuba liman ra'a man ra'ani. He said glad tidings, and this is glad tidings, i.e. of paradise, to the one who sees me, and believes in me and glad tidings to the one who sees someone who saw me and so that this is again can be passed on by way of inheritance is that that special blessing of even if you weren't able to see their teachers you see someone who saw those blessed people and then it goes on and then it goes on until the special time and then he gives us some of these other etiquettes that go along with this. A lot more could be said about that, but we will suffice ourselves with those beautiful lines. But the poetry of the people of Allah is that it is that filled with light. And when you recite it, is that it brings out the very best in you. Inshallah, just very briefly before we get up for Salat al Maghrib, we are committed to that every week reminding ourselves of some of the etiquettes of Fatuwa. Of spiritual chivalry. And we will begin with the first one that the great Imam, Imam Muslim, mentions in his book titled Kitab al Futuwa, the book on spiritual chivalry. And the first one is Famin al Futuwati. As we said, he always begins like this it is from Futuwa. Al Mulatafatu Ma'al Ikhwan. To be good to your friends. Wal Qiyamu Bihawa Ijihim. And meet their needs. Yani take care of their needs. Is that mulatafa? The Arabs say latafahu a ahsani ilay. It's to show goodness to someone. It's to show benevolence. It's to show excellence to someone. And specifically, it can be used in relation to how we speak. A alana lahul qul is that you speak gently and appropriately. That to the person that is that you are speaking to, to your brother. Especially, and this applies, of course, to all people, but it especially applies to your brother, or in, by extension, your sister, for the sake of Allah, Tabaraka wa Taala. And there is a hadith narrated by Ibn Abi Dunya that states, "Man al-tafa mu'minan aw qama lahu bihajatan min hawaij dunya sagra dalik aw kabra kana hakkan ala Allahi in yuhdimu khalib in yom al-qiyamah." As it, whoever that shows goodness towards a believer or that takes care of one of his needs of a worldly nature, takes care of one of his worldly needs, whether that be small or large, whether that be a great need or a small need, is that indeed, is that he will have a haq upon Allah. In reality, none of us have a haq upon Allah. This is just a way of that phrasing it so that we can realize that Allah Ta'ala has promises that this is what He will give. Is that 
he will have a haq upon Allah that Allah will grant him those that will serve him on Yom Qiyamah. And so what we're being taught here is, is that two things. Is that one, mulatifa. Is that this is, this, is, this is how we should be. Whether or not people serve us, we are in the service of other people. And if people call upon us, even if they call upon us time and time again, time and time again, even if they don't reciprocate, this is just how we are. This is just how we are. We show goodness to people. And that what emanates from us is only what is good, is only what is pure. And even though every single one of us falls short in this every single day, every single one of us, and I'll be the first to admit, we fall short in this. But let's recognize where the, what the principles are, and let's take ourselves to task. And let's repent time and time again for falling short in the way that we should be. Because the more that we that implement these principles, and we're going to be speaking about them for the next weeks upon weeks, because there's many. The more we put those into practice, the more the reality of what we refer to, those anwar of talaqi, that those radiant lights that, em, 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 that emanate from the heart, that when people come together, the stronger they will be. And then, that you don't even need to say any words at that point. It will speak for itself. People will come in and experience something. And believe me, even someone who has not said La ilaha illallah is that when they are around radiant people, they feel it. I've seen this with my own eyes. People from my own family seeing our teachers and coming out of a gathering with them and almost in a state where they're mesmerized because they felt some powerful feeling. And I don't even want to call it spiritual because that's such a cheap world in the word in the modern world. Mm. That's such a cheap word in the modern world that is abused mm. and misused. But they felt something that touched their heart. Because that is the heart of someone who is connected to Allah Jalla Jalla. And the heart is the mahal of ma'rifa. It is the locus of knowledge of Allah Jalla Jalla. And this is why that they say actually to visit the place that a wali worshipped is greater than even visiting their grave. Why? Because that physical place was touched to their clothes and their physical body, which was touched to their heart, and their heart was connected to Allah Jalla Jalalu. This is the description of that the great Imam Abdullah bin Abi Haddad when he came into the presence of one of his great teachers, Habib Umar bin Abdurrahman al Tas, he said, Describe him for me. And he said that two words Two nouns and one conjunction. Qalb wa rab. Heart, a heart. You got to add another article in English. A heart with his Lord, you could probably say. A heart with his Lord, period. That's how he described it. Yani, that that man's reality was he had a heart and that heart was filled with the remembrance of Allah. Jalla Jalla and we should mention their stories. And even though we fall short, because these are the people that we want to be like and that we want to have our hearts attached to to pull us to these meanings. So this is the very first one as he says, is that al mulatifa mad ikhwan to be good to your friends, to show benevolence, to show them ihsan and to take care of their needs. This is one of the great things that we can do is to be in the service of the believers. And in fact that Allah Ta'ala has special ranks that he only gives to the people of khidmah. To the people of service. And we should never see any service that we do to be that beyond that us. We should see ourselves as being honored to do by any service and to serve all different types of people, wherever they might be on the face of this earth, despite their social standing, despite the color of their skin, despite all of these things that the societies in which we live, especially the United States of America, consider beyond all of that, we are in the service of people. And there's nothing more that we want to do than to take care of all of their needs. And the most important needs are the needs that pertain to the Akhirah, but especially also as well that the worldly needs may Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq to that live up to these words. And may it not just be that a movement of the tongue may it be a reality of how that it is that you and I choose to leave. May Allah Ta'ala inspire us and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala protect us from the evil of our own selves and protect us from the whispering of shaitan 
And may Allah wa ta'ala keep our hearts together Amen. and protect us and to protect our families Amen. and our children and our offspring and our children's children until Yawm Al-Qiyam, Ya Rabbul Alameen. And all of us and all of them that continuously fall short, we ask Allah Ta'ala to encompass us and envelop us in His mercy, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no matter what we do, no matter how much we fall short, may the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be even greater of that. La'ala rahmata rabbi hila yaqsima tati ala qadr al-isyani fil isami fil isami fil isami that, and that may the mercy of our Lord is that when He distributes it, is that come according to the degree of our disobedience. The more disobedient we are, the more mercy, inshallah, we receive. And that is especially easy for those who send a lot of salawat upon Sayyidina Muhammad. May we be from those people and live and die upon these meanings. May Allah bless us and protect us. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the Global Islamic Seminary. Visit SeekersGuidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit SeekersGuidance.org slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.